Welcome to Wild Treasures, a series that highlights some of South Africa's conservation efforts. On this last episode of this season, we decided to focus on the prickly rodent known as the porcupine, aka Nuku. Porcupines are the third largest rodents in the world. The name is derived from a French word with the meaning the one who rises up in anger. These mammals have a coat of sharp quills covering their body, which they use to camouflage themselves from predators and as a defense mechanism when they are under attack. There are 29 different species of porcupines all over the world, with the largest found in Africa. The African Crested Porcupine. They prefer to settle on rocky areas or next to roots where they will dig their own homes in the ground called burrows. This territorial animal has the ability to climb trees, although only seldom, and the ability to swim. Porcupines are herbivores that prefer to eat roots, barks, potatoes and carrots for a meal. They are also known to eat a bit of dead flesh or insects on occasions just to ingest some calcium into their bodies. The average lifespan of these animals is five to seven years in the wild and often they fall prey to predators like lions and leopards who find these prickly animals tasty. Some of these great predators have come off second best in a battle with porcupine, which first warn their enemies by stamping their feet. They will then move to click their teeth or even growl before vibrating their quills and ramming their attacker backwards. Porcupines are not just known to be a nuisance to farmers, but they are also seen as a good luck charm in certain cultures. Porcupines can become an agricultural pest for farmers, who retaliate by smoking them out of their burrows and eliminating them from settled areas. In some countries, porcupines are valued for their meat, as it contains as much protein as you would find in beef and lamb, but low in cholesterol. The meat also contains stamina boosters and ketotophen, which is said to be useful for people with asthma. They are also hunted down and killed with spears for their quills, which in some cultures it's believed that they are a good luck charm, while others use them as ornaments or even hair pins. We caught up with traditional healer in Sika Kulosa, who explained the value of porcupines in his practice. Traditionally, the porcupine is a just uh, you, you cannot. It's not easy to see it. So when you see it, uh, according to, to my own understanding, it's uh, it's lucky when you see it. So what do we use it for? In most cases, uh, it, we use it for for many sicknesses. 
uh, you find that we, we use it for such illnesses as, uh, as we take certain part in it. So then we use that thing for your cancers, your people who have uh, skin problems, you know, so, but what we do mostly, we, we I, I don't go, you know, there are people that go out there and, and hunt, you know, for us, you know, others you'll find them dead, you know, so, but mostly it heals and it, it is a lucky animal and most of, uh, one of the most important thing, we, we use uh, this, this kind of things, this kind of things, you'll, you, you'll find that the person, uh, his, his leg or her leg is, is full of blood, so what we do, you're gonna be, we call it Ugochopa in Zulu, you know? So the blood comes out. So it also helps, another form of helping, so that the person of high blood, or if ever you have a problem, you sort of fit or what, you, you use it for, for, for that, those reasons. Hey, it is important, because I'm not gonna use a, 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 a pin to, 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 to make your blood circulate or to heal you. And it is important, because that is, it is a, it is a pet to me, and that is a very important pet, that even eats every herb. So when you eat every herb, f from it also there's a healing. We res I respect it and uh, because there's a healing in it, you understand? So, hey sister, this is very, very big for us. You know, we need this and then th that is, you can't find it anywhere. You find it by lucky. So anything that you find it by lucky, it's lucky itself and it's very important to us. You understand? Yes, my sister. In some beliefs, the meat and the tail of the porcupine improves vitality of men, while some traditional healers believe in its healing properties for other diseases. Porcupine, we, we use it for various things. Uh, it, the nature of porcupine eats root and eats, eats herbs. And most of the herbs that you see, uh, they eat, eat, it's, it's, it's one of those bitter herbs and bitter herbs are healing herbs. So you find them, it is that thing, and it causes something within the stomach. And that ball that we find in the stomach, we can use it for, for, for healing different things, uh, such as cancer, skin problems, food poisoning, you understand? Because it is different plants and different roots, therefore they come together, so it's becoming one of the multi, 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 multi to heal a person. The quill is also used to mix herbs, simply because it is seen as a lucky charm. Uh, the, the reason that we mix herbs at times over this, let me say we, let me, can I say I? I mix herbs over this thing. You understand, I just said earlier on that this is a lucky animal. No one can see, you cannot find it anywhere, like even in a tuck shop. So, you, so me mixing this, I'm also allowing it, I'm, I'm like, you know, it's, it's another part of it. This is a lucky animal. So I, I, when I mix herbs, I also, you know what, let me use it so that maybe things can be okay. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's all in, in my belief that when I mix it, things will be okay for people, you understand? Yes, not necessarily it has magic. It doesn't have magic. The only magic that it has is one. That if you have a problem with your, your blood, what, 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 then it's simple for your blood to flow and relax as well. So we will be doing this. The blood will be coming out of your, out of your, out of, out of your skin. So in that way, it's, it's simple, then you're going to be okay in, when time goes on. There's nothing, nothing uh, magical about this, but what it does is just a standard work that maybe every culture, they, they use it. It's not all traditional healers who go out to hunt these animals. Some actually would rather pick up a dead porcupine and use its body to treat diseases. Um, you, you see, about animals getting killed as a lucky charm, uh, I understand that it is not about getting killed, but it's about knowing the importance of animals in our lives. So, but people become brutal in, in, in a sense, they abuse these things. Because I believe on my own concept, it's fine when, when, when you take something that is already, you can see this one is dying. And you can take it, then you can kill because it's dying already. But not, people just, for fun, and for information, other people, they even eat this. And trust me, it's a nice meat to eat.
porcupines are listed as a protected species, making it illegal to hunt or kill these animals without a permit. But many of them still face persecution. In 2007, a new legislation was passed, classifying porcupines as a protected species, making it illegal to hunt or kill these animals without a hunting permit. Organizations like Beauty Without Cruelty are hard at work trying to educate the public on animal rights and the importance of conserving our wildlife. Beauty Without Cruelty was established in 1975 and initially it started out focusing on cosmetic testing and the issues of wildlife exploitation like ivory and fur. Over the years we have grown and so we now explore all animal exploitation regardless of the circumstance. So whether it's animals in entertainment, farming, um, wildlife exploitation still cosmetic testing, vivisection, which is separate from cosmetic testing because vivisection is about medical research. Um, you name the area and we, what we do is we educate and we explain that there are kinder alternatives. There are more humane choices that we can make in our everyday decisions because every decision we make has an impact on somebody somewhere. Their work is focused on various fields like cosmetic testing, exploitation of wildlife and factory farming, but with the sole purpose of defending animal rights. A great many wonderful, wonderful, really hardworking people have come before me and we are just hoping to continue the tradition of, of education and exploring alternatives um, so that people can live kinder lives. Because if we are kinder in our everyday choices, we will become kinder as a society and that's what we all want. Be it porcupines, elephants, seals or whales, Beauty Without Cruelty will go out of their way for their cause and have already ran successful campaigns in almost 40 years of existence. One of the things that, that we have managed to accomplish is to get language changed in a legal document which doesn't refer to animals as it but as either the animal or he or she. And this is important because our language affects how we treat others. Um, when you refer to an animal as an it, you are delegating to the same status as the chair that I'm sitting on. Under the law, they are considered movable property, which is wrong, which is why there is so much abuse and why there's so much apathy and why there's so much cruelty. Porcupines are faced with various exploitations, including the growing quill trade. Well, um, there are a couple of issues. One is what started out as what we call a cottage industry, where people were making small things to sell in craft shops or from their home or whatever the case may be. And one of those was, for example, picking up quills that they found in the fields to make lampshades or placemats or other decorations or to use in, in greeting cards and that sort of thing. And then people started cottoning onto this so they just started going out and killing porcupines. That's the one issue. The other issue is they're considered vermin, which means they have no rights at all. Um, and farmers are happily killing them left, right and centre because they feel that they are eating their crops and so on and so forth. There's actually enough for us all. Um, and the third issue is that they are used as medicine. Um, in, in, in local law, apparently the intestines are burnt with something else and this is meant to make people stronger and make them invincible and so on and so forth. And realistically, this has much power as rhino horn does. But the problem is, the porcupines are the ones who are suffering and as it stands now, we have absolutely no idea of how many porcupines there are. We have no idea of their numbers and they fulfill a vital role within the ecosystem, as does every animal who's in the ecosystem. Um, and that's an important point. And um, what we are trying to do is get this um, started 
as a process where we can start doing an audit or a count of animals, particularly in the Western Cape, through the local wildlife forum, which for assorted reasons has been stagnant for about the last 18 months. But we're hoping to get this up and running so that we can find out how many there are. Are they in danger? Are we going to soon run out of porcupines completely? Um, they are a rodent, which means they do need to chew. All rodents need to chew to keep their, their teeth down and so on. They have specific needs and requirements. They are nocturnal and they are trapping them in the Western Cape, which is completely illegal. And what they do is they, they have sort of net traps. Um, but when there have been fires on the mountain, they have been caught in those traps and they've been unable to escape the fire, which is horrific. Um, so it is illegal. If you see anybody, please let the local law enforcement know, phone the SPCA. It, as I say, it is illegal. And the SPCA is the only organization who has the legal mandate to go in and affect the necessary actions. Time for us to take a break. When we come back, we take a look at the growing porcupine quail trade. Stay tuned. <laughs> 